Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will look at how to use the libewf tools to image media devices into an E01 or an expert witness format. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so I know you care and to get notified when the next video comes out. In a previous video, we looked at imaging tools that created images that resulted in one large file. These large output files are fine, but takes up a lot of space. If your evidence is one terabyte, then you will need a staging drive that's larger than one terabyte to contain that one terabyte file. The expert witness format, otherwise known as EWF or the E01 format, provides for compressed output along with metadata like case number, examiner name, and the hashes. The tool we are going to use is called EWF Acquire which is part of the libewf package. Let's start our setup by taking a look at the devices on our system. So I'm going to do a sudo lsblock dash capital S. So we will see that our staging drive SDA and then our evidence is SDE, which is the one gig USB device. I'm going to create a mount point called slash mnthd. So sudo migdir slash mnthd and then I'm going to mount the staging drive to it sudo mount slash dev slash sda2 slash mnt slash hd and then cd into a folder already created called lib ewf so cd slash mnt slash hd slash lib ewf Let's go ahead and image that one gig USB using the tool EWF Acquire into an E01 output. The most basic way to use EWF Acquire is to use it in interactive mode. So we can go ahead and do sudo EWF Acquire dash L for a log file and then give it a name. I'm going to do BM75309 imaging.txt. And then lastly, you point it to the device you want to image, which in our case is slash dev slash SDE. So EWF Acquire, when run in an interactive mode, will prompt you to enter a bunch of information, starting with the path name to the output. So I'm going to go ahead and put BM75309. And there's no need for an extension of E01 because the tool will go ahead and append the E01s and E02s, etc. The next prompt is for the case number. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that. Then the next field is the description of the device. So it's going to be a SanDisk 1 gig USB. For the evidence number, we're going to put the evidence number of BM75309. Examiner name, Sam Singer. Notes, I'm not going to have any notes for this particular one, so go ahead and hit enter. For media type, I'm going to take the default of removable. For media characteristics of logical and physical, once again, I'm going to take the default. And then it's going to ask you what format. There is a whole bunch of options here. The default is for NK6, which is commonly accepted, so we're going to leave it as the default. Next is compression method. I'm going to go ahead and take the default as well. And then for the compression level, I'm going to specify the best compression. So I'm going to type that in. Starting location, usually it, the default is going to be zero, right? That's the very first available sector. So go ahead and hit enter. The number of bytes to acquire, you can limit to only a certain number, but for the default number is going to be the entire drive. So I'm going to select that. Next is the segment size. So these are the sizes of those E01 and E02 files. I'm going to go ahead and uh, type in 100 MIBI bytes. For bytes per sector, I'm going to leave it as a default. Number of sectors to read at a time. I'm also going to leave that as a default. Error granularity, default, retries, default. Wipe sector on read error. I'm going to go ahead and say yes so that it basically zeroes out the output for bad sectors. And then let you verify everything looks good. So we can take a look at all the fields we entered here. 
and if it all looks good we can type yes or just hit enter so once it's done let's take a look at the result we're going to do an ls minus lht to take a look at all of the files here so you can see the output is going to be the bm75309.e01, e02, and so on and so forth. And then the log file is bm75309image.txt. So it's always a good idea to review the output logs. And so if we do a less of the bm75309image.txt, we will see the md5 hash that is written into there. Now, if we have a E01 image set and you want to see the metadata embedded within it, we can use the EWF info command. So we, let's type EWF info and then point it at the first segment. So bm75309.e01. And then this will show you all of the metadata, right? So in this case, we typed in all of the case numbers and evidence numbers, evidence name, etc. Uh, and so one thing you'll notice in the metadata is the hash, right? That's the beauty of using a E01 or EWF format is that the hash is stored with the image itself. All right, so now let's assume that we receive this E01 file from another examiner. How do we verify its integrity in transit? In previous videos, we used the MD5 sum command to obtain the MD5 hash of an image but in this case, we can't do that with E01 images because these images contain metadata. They could be compressed and they could possibly be encrypted. So because of any of those factors, we cannot use the tool MD5SUM to simply get a hash. The tool that we will use is called EWF Verify. For the image file, you just need to point to the first segment and the tool will know about the rest of the segments. So let's go ahead and do sudo EWF verify dash L for the log again, BM75309 image.txt. And then lastly, the E01 segment, so BM75309.e01. Because the log file we specified in this command already exists, EWF verify will append the verification results to the end of the file. So once it's done, we can do a cat of bm75309 imaging.txt. We see two new lines, which tells you that a hash was stored in the file, and then a line of the calculated hash. And in this case, the hashes remain the same, so we are good to go. If you are scripting the imaging process and cannot have interaction with the program, you will want to run in unattended mode using the dash u option. Then specify all of the fields of interest with their respective options. So sudo ewf acquire dash u, right, for unattended mode, dash d for digest, so in this case we're going to use md5, dash l for log again, so we're going to call it bm75309u.txt, dash capital S for the segment size of the output. So we're going to specify 500 mibibytes, M-I-B, dash T for the target, which is the name of the path name of the output, BM75309U, dash capital C for case number, 201103-0105, dash capital D, for description, so we're going to put in double quotes, SanDisk, one gigabyte USB, dash capital E for evidence number, so BM75309, dash E, lowercase e, for examiner name, so again, double quotes, Sam Singer, and lastly, the device that we want to image, slash dev slash SDE. And once it's done running, it's always a good idea to review the log. So let's go ahead and cat bm75309u.txt. And sure enough, we have that same MD5 hash that we've had from the previous examples. If you want to obtain hashes other than MD5, SHA-1, or SHA-256, or you want to use another tool to read the source drive, 
because they may do better with air recovery, then you can use the EWF Acquire Stream tool to convert the data stream into the E01 format. I found that DC3DD performs air recovery very well, so let's use that as the front end to image a device and use the libEWF tool to convert it to an E01 output file. So the command we're going to type is sudo dc3dd if for input file equals slash dev slash sde hash equals md5 log equals dc3dd underscore log dot text. Now we're not going to specify the output because we want the output to go into the pipe which will get fed in as input to our next command. So after the pipe is going to be sudo ewf acquire stream dash l for the log file bm75309 dc3dd.txt dash capital S for segment size of the output 100 mib again dash t for the path name for the target file so bm75309 dc3dd dash capital C for case number 201103-0105 dash D description double quotes SanDisk 1 gigabyte USB dash capital E for evidence number BM75309 dash lowercase e for examiner so quote Sam Singer so once again let's review the logs once the imaging has completed this time we have two log files, one from DC3DD and one from EWF Acquire Stream. So let's take a look at the one from EWF Acquire Stream. So we're going to less bm75309 dc3dd.txt. And here we see that it has the hash of the evidence. And now well, let's take a look at the output from DC3DD. So I'm going to do a more of DC3DD underscore log dot text. And what we can see here is that it read the evidence device. These are the number of sectors. It does not have any errors after reading it. And then it has a hash. And so hopefully all the hashes will match for you when you're doing this. Now Let's hash the E01 to make sure it was written out correctly. We can go ahead and use the EWF verify command we learned earlier. So sudo EWF verify dash L BM75309 DC3DD.txt BM75309 DC3DD.E01. And when it's done, we can go ahead and take a look at the log file. So let's go ahead and do cat of bm75309 dc3dd.txt and we see that we have the first line from when it first did the imaging and it captured the hash and then the last two lines from when, when we did the verify first it tells you that there is a hash stored and then secondly it tells you that it recalculated what's inside the file and they match all right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about the libEWF set of tools. We used the EWF Acquire tool to image a device and output to E01 format. Then we used EWF Info to view the metadata of the E01 dataset. We also looked at the EWF Verify tool to verify hashes of a E01 dataset. Lastly, we use EWF Acquire Stream in conjunction with DC3DD to get better error recovery during imaging. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.